This is, this is, this is. Welcome to Smacktober, everyone. The reason why I call it Smacktober is because we were smack dab in the middle of summer, and then, boom, here it is. We're October. It's almost Christmas. I mean, Thanksgiving is right around the corner. Halloween's basically over by the time you listen to this podcast. I mean, no effects. By the time you're listening to this podcast, no effects is not a band anymore. Let's pour one out for my boys. Oh man, that's a crazy that's a crazy situation because I know it's in the future for me. I'm recording this right before I go to San Pedro. MXPX is playing San Pedro. We just played because you're listening to this in the future. And I'm there all weekend. And um, I just hope I hope I had the time of my life. <laughs> uh, I mean, there's a lot going on. I'm doing a lot. I'm not just hanging out all weekend. I'm, I'm doing work and I'm doing some things. But um, it's all band related, all MXPX related, basically uh, punk rock related. So anyway, that was, I, I hope it was a great weekend. Um, anyway, let's just, it's a weird thing trying to talk about the future, but when it's already in the past by the time you're listening. So I'm not going to go further into that. Everybody's brain is going to explode, including mine. So Smacktober, here we are. Halloween's coming up. What are you going to be for Halloween? That's what I want to know. Call in. The number is 360 360- 830-6660. Call and leave me a voicemail. Let me know what your favorite costume is or has been in the past. Have you won any costume contests? Maybe, maybe you won some money. I don't know. Call in. Let me know what's your favorite costume. What's the best costume? What are you going to be this year? Let's do a Halloween episode. Um, Maybe we won't do a Halloween episode. It just depends. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But uh, a lot going on. MXPX is going to be in Chicago, back-to-back. MXPX in the Ataris, two nights at Metro in Chicago. That's December 13th. That's Friday the 13th, December, and Saturday the 14th. Come on out. Tickets on sale right now. They're moving. Thank you to anybody that's already bought tickets. Please don't wait. Get those tickets. I don't like it when people wait till like the week of, and then they buy their tickets. I know some that I'm not talking about you. If you know where you're going to be and you want to come to the show, just get the tickets. Commit to it. Say, you know what? I'm going to commit. I'm not going to be wishy-washy. I'm going to go see MXPX. I'm going to go see the Ataris. We're going to make this happen because I will be there. We'll see you there. Uh, Chicago and then Happy New Year 2025. MXPX and the Ataris are coming to Texas. House of Blues Houston, January 3rd. That's a Friday night. And then House of Blues Dallas. That's Saturday night, uh, January 4th. So can't wait to be back in Texas. I love it. Do I stop by Waco? Do I go have lunch? What do I do? What are the plans? We must talk about that on the podcast as well. All right. Well, Smacktober is, uh, is officially underway. Let's just put it that way. Um, got a lot going on this week. I got a lot going on every week, but sometimes... The podcast is like, am I going to get a podcast episode in? Is this happening? Because uh, I don't have a lot of time here. Um, trying to spend some time with the family, trying to be able to, you know, hang with the kids a little bit while Holly gets some things done. Um, of course, she'd be like, "What? What am I getting done? What are you talking about?" I, you know, no time, no time. There's, there's no time. I'm doing a lot of uh, some prep on some promo stuff, uh, some press stuff. Uh, I'm doing songwriting gets to a certain hour of the night i'm like usually here around nine o'clock going i'm I'm going uh, i don't feel like doing i mean if i'm editing that's one thing editing like a video but i don't feel like doing paperwork or going and looking at flights and and things like that i don't want to do that it's nighttime i want to write i want to write music i want to be creative and that's that's usually what i've been doing at night so during the day uh, I still have been writing, but uh, I'm getting a lot of things done, getting things done for the live stream, you know, making sure everything's working. We do have a live stream coming up this week, Wednesday. Um, I don't know what the date is on Wednesday, but <laughs> but it's Wednesday. 
mxpx.com you can always find us there mxpx youtube if you're not already subscribed to the youtube please subscribe to the mxpx youtube because that is the best sound and picture you're going to get on the live stream and i know it's not some people have to have have the facebook open you know because they want to be on a certain chat i get that but the youtube has a chat and it's an awesome chat so we're looking at the youtube chat we're looking at the facebook chats we're looking at it all we're taking an aggregate from from everybody and we're trying to get your requests in we're trying to uh get your comments in there so keep the comments coming that's so much fun when we do these live streams and we're going to continue that um yeah I don't know if you noticed, but last week we didn't have a live stream um, as evidenced that we didn't have it. But no, it's because we, we were so busy going to L.A., going, getting everything together. We had a practice, we had, but it wasn't a practice. You know, we, we had to like focus on the show um, instead of just piddling around online. But uh, yeah, a lot going on. I guess that's, that's my inside scoop. I think it's probably TMI, but um nothing nothing crazy or negative to report all is well it's october um it, it just it really just snuck up september i thought we had so much time you know isn't that life you think you have so much time and then boom time to go let's go so um let's get to some some voicemails speaking of of time let's make this happen so um I'm just going to grab a couple. Um, there's two from Ryan in Quebec. It's like a, a string voicemail, so to speak. And then we'll, we'll end it with Gabe. Gabe from Kennewick, Washington. Now, I have not listened to these voicemails. I just have the title of who it is. So um, I hope it's good because this is the episode, people. I appreciate you guys. Um, mxpeaks.com for merch if you Support what I do with the podcast or what I do with the band. Everything I do just runs through MXPX. MXPX is is really everything. And then um, you know the podcast is something I do uh, purely as a support to what MXPX does. You know, I I love it. I do it as a hobby in a way, but but I also do take it kind of seriously because you know serious business, punk rock, talking about songwriting talking about careers, talking about travels, talking about stories. Um, and, and of course, business, you know, that that's probably part of the reason why I started the podcast. Although I, I go like this up and down on, on how I view business, how I view creativity, how I view productivity. And should I always be busy or should I pick and choose what I'm working on? And, and, that answer changes, to be honest, and it changes um, every few years. It, I go on like a maybe bi-yearly cycle of <laughs> of my 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 thought flow, and and I have a mind map of what I want to get done in a year. Um, and, and I don't mean specifics. I mean, sure, specific could mean I want to get an album done. I want to write an album, um, but it's not you it's more it's it's a little bit broader um but certainly when there's an album on the horizon that gets lumped into into the mind map um but i'm i'm annoying in the fact that i don't know if this is something that's been my whole personality my whole life or if it's something that's been as an adult but i've noticed and definitely people around me have noticed that if I don't see something, I don't know it's there. Like, of course I know it's there. Like, I'm not like a baby that doesn't understand that something do isn't real unless it's in front of you. But what I mean is there's so much going on in my life that when the need arises, that's what I'm paying attention to. And it, and it, it literally translates into if I have, if I have this pick on the counter here, or here, this is easier to see. If I have this MXPX, uh, what is this, pendant, pendant. Uh, if I have this in my drawer, I'm gonna forget about it. I'm, I'm not gonna see it. It's not a part of my daily life. And so what I do is if I, if I know I'm gonna need this tomorrow, this is going on my counter 
right next to right next to the microwave which is the entrance to the the entrance of the house i don't know uh the entrance to like the next room which is like a the locker room we call it it's like a foyer it's an it's a it's a it's like a room that is just an nothing like it has jackets and shoes and stuff in it so anyway i would put that right on the counter that's leading into the next room so that i know i'm gonna need this because if it's not in my sight in the morning i've forgotten about it unless it's my phone my keys my water bottle i usually i usually will remember my water bottle but Sometimes I'll forget my water bottle because, by the way, I've been using this, these koozies on these water bottles for like ever since we got koozies at mxpeaks.com. And it's glorious. It looks kind of ridiculous, but they fit. And the reason why I do this is because when I set down my water bottle, it doesn't make a clank wherever I am. And a lot of times, and I'm thinking mainly like at night when I come home from the studio, I've got my water bottle and it's always clink on the countertop. Not anymore. Finding ways to be stealthier. So I love that. And, and it helps on the podcast too. When I'm setting it down, when I'm using it on the podcast, you didn't hear that. Amazing. I wonder if this is thing, a thing that people have done for a long time and I just literally discovered it on my own and think I'm a genius. <laughs> I'm not a genius. I'm just uh, close to a genius. Cheers. Hmm. All right, you guys, that's me. It just seems like if I can't see it, I'll forget about it. Um, and I don't know if that's something that has been my personality my whole life or if it's something I got weird about later in life. I guess we'll never know. All right, let's get to a couple of voicemails and we'll be out of here. Happy Smacktober. <laughs> hey, Mike, it's your buddy Ryan calling from Quebec. I, uh, I did that broken hearted cover I think you heard, but uh, I was listening to the Let's Rock album last night, and I had some questions. I think all those songs are B-sides, right? Um, and there's some really amazing songs on there. I thought that Running Out of Time and Don't Forget Me kind of sounded like Arthur songs, but that MXTX made sound bigger and better. Um, I guess I want to know like what albums were those tracks intended for um specifically those two but you could tell me all of them i don't care that'd be sweet uh i also couldn't help but notice that make up your mind is on there and that broken bone seven inch is still one of my absolute favorite eps or whatever you want to call it um and when you guys were doing all the live COVID shows on uh you know that you were streaming from your practice spot i watched every single one and you guys seriously played almost every MXPX song in your catalog, except my absolute favorite from the Broken Bones EP, Time and Season. I don't think there's a deeper MXPX B-side. Changed my mind. <laughs> but uh, maybe next time you're in the Montreal area, you guys can bang that one out for me. Speaking of Montreal, I'm going to see No Effects as a goodbye tour tomorrow there. And I wish you guys were on that one, too. But it's all good. Hope you're well. Uh, hope Tom and Yuri and Chris are good. Peace out, man. Bye. Dude, thanks for the call, Ryan. Um, we absolutely wanted to be on that show, by the way. It's it's gone by now. It's, it's passed. But um, it, looked, it looked amazing. Uh, we can't wait to come back to Quebec. So uh, Montreal, Quebec, the whole area, we can't wait to see you. We love you. Ryan, um, time and season... That is a pretty deep track. It's, I mean, there's probably songs that would be harder for us to play, but that one is a weird one. It's got some weird parts. It's, it's cool though. I, I, I kind of vaguely can re remember it. Um, time and season. Yeah, that's that's not on. Let's rock. But that's something that. Honestly, I can't promise that we'll play because I can't, I can't, you know, all right, guys, let's play this song that no one ever knows. Just, just Ryan's going to know this one. Maybe a few other, a few other fan clubbers, some PXers, but um, I'll look into it. I'll look into it. Let's get into, let's get into Let's Rock. Now, Let's Rock is a B-Sides album, technically. Um, 
what that means to us is it's songs that didn't it didn't fit on an album and usually usually there there is either something wrong with the song <laughs> like it wasn't quite developed enough but we recorded it anyway um but at the same time like that's kind of traditionally a b-side is a song that's it's a, it's like a b-side it's not as good as an a-side right and that is still true technically of this album these are b-sides but some of these songs should have been on albums they just didn't find their way onto an album they didn't find their way home and it doesn't mean they're not good songs so some of the songs that don't make it a record don't make a record because there's no place to put the song. It's like, this is gonna mess up the whole flow of all these other songs. It doesn't fit sound wise. Now that's the best kind of B-side. That's a great B-side because that means it's a great song. It's a song that could make any album that it fit on. Now it's good enough to make an album, but it just doesn't fit. That could be for a lot of reasons. It could be for a, a lot of reasons. Um, Maybe you already have a song that sounds very similar to it. You don't want to have two songs that sound like each other. And that's just the fact of creativity is you're going to have some things sometimes that, that have similarities to some things you've already done. It's like, you know, your, your, your best influence is yourself, right? So that happens. But, but this, this album, honestly... I'm not going to get into the technical reasons why we did it, but we did did do it for some some technical reasons. But aside from okay, we need to do this record and we're going to do this record. Why did we put these songs on here? I'll go through each one. You walk, I run. That was uh, that was a song off of the session from the ever ever passing moment. Pretty sure we didn't use it because it just didn't fit anywhere into the record. Now we could have use that song instead of another song off the ever passing moment but what song you know so i'm not i'm not at all unhappy with the ever passing moment like it's uh it's got a lot of great songs um a couple towards the end sure you could switch out some people really like uh uh um i can't even think of something uh da -da 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 one step closer to life like that's a song that's not for everybody because it's slow it's talking about philosophical ideas and it's just talking about things in my life you know and i guess it took me a really long time to realize that people are coming to mxpx for a certain sound a certain vibe and we can go outside that sound but it has to be really good it has to be really good so a lot of these songs are too far outside of that sound um and you especially said um where did you go and don't forget me when you're gone i think um or maybe running out of time those three songs are definitely a little outside mxpx style especially at the time we hadn't put out um quit your life yet um but you know, we're on a major label where punk bands are going, you know, they're, they're getting huge. We were no longer thinking punk rock. We were thinking music, just put out music, put out good music. And um, that's where you get Don't Forget Me When You're Gone and Running Out of Time. It's just music that I was writing. And none of these were meant for Arthur or anything. Arthur wasn't doing anything at the time. Maybe they could have been Arthur. You know, I could make... I can make a lot of songs into an Arthur song. Just slow it down, give it a six, eight time signature. And MXPX is the same way. You know, I've taken songs that I, I songs that could be tumble down songs I've taken, I've used for MXPX, vice versa. Um, uh, Tom Wisniewski, you know, when he heard I'm Still Here on the first tumble down album, it's like song two or something like that. Um, he, he was like, dude, that song is so good. Do not... Next time you write a song like that, do not use that for Tumble Down. Like, you have to at least bring it to MXPX first. He wasn't saying it in a mean way. He was saying it like, dude, come on, bro. And I was like, yeah, okay, you're, you're right. You know, like, 
it just happened to be the cycle I was writing for Tumble Down, and I wrote "I'm Still Here." Great song, still holds up. That song could be an MXPX song. We could change up the sound of it, and it could be a punk song. So, getting back to "Let's Rock," you know, a song like track six, "Make Up Your Mind." Make up your mind. That was off the Broken Bones um, era, somewhere in there. Jerry Finn recorded it. That's that was just a classic punk song that really was very MXPX. I felt like it was so MXPX. And I remember I wrote the song about, I think I wrote it about my sister. So I was mad at her, my younger sister at the time. I was mad at her because she did something. I mean, this is a girl that stabbed me with a pencil in the back and the lead broke off and I've got a hole in my back to this day. So we had our, our childhood beef and we're fine now, but... <laughs> I wrote that song about her, but um, that's a classic punk song. So, I mean, it, it wasn't, to me, I was just writing songs, but that song wasn't, it wasn't that it wasn't a good song. It just, we already had some better songs. My Life Story was a better punk song that fit in that range of mid-tempo, uh, melodic, MXP style song. So, um, don't forget me when you're gone. Dude, I was just, I was writing songs on the piano during this era and that's where you get running out of time that's where you get where did you go that's where you get don't forget me when you're gone all written on the piano and i was just i knew a few chords you know and i knew a few a few moves and i could go from major to minor very easily and all these little tricks that i was learning i was listening to elvis costello as ev evidenced by the ever passing moment um so i was heavily influenced by English, the British side of punk, which, and we don't, you know, I'm not talking about the Sex Pistols, although I do like the Sex Pistols, but I was listening to Elvis Costello, which wasn't as punk. It was more singer songwriter in a scrappy, scrappy vacuum in a way that was separate from punk rock. Um, these guys, all their players, could play so well and and here i am i i didn't know i knew a little bit of music theory but i didn't really know all those chords i didn't know all how the fretboard connects to each other um i'm not sure i st even know now to be honest you know i've just it's like i decided this is all i need to know in this respect, like I'm learning things constantly and I, and I do learn new ways to write constantly. But at the time I was just like, wow, this is, this is all these chords too much. I, I was going crazy writing Beatles style punk songs. That's basically what I was doing. Beatles style punk songs. So that's where running out of time comes from. Sweet, sweet thing. Um, where did you go? All of that. And and sweet, sweet thing was just one of those songs where it was just like I had so many ideas. I couldn't ever like, I couldn't ever decide to leave it all. I got too precious with it. And that's when song, you know, when you're too precious with a song, you want to keep parts that you love to play. You want to keep parts that you like, but don't really serve the song as much or don't don't really give you what the song needs, but it's what musicians want to play. They, they, the musician wants to play that. I want to sing that over and over. I want to do that. I really like that part. We got to leave all that behind. Darren Doan just put out a book called, called, um, some, called not I Am Precious, called uh, Say No, <laughs> what is it called? Some, say No to Precious or something like that. Um, let me just look it up. I just had it. Don't be precious. That's that's my memory. It wasn't in front of me. Um, anyway, Darren Doan just wrote a book called Don't Be Precious. And it's funny because, you know, he, he's gone through everything I've gone through and much more in, in a lot of ways. And, and I wonder what my book would be. You know, and he's got a couple books coming out. He's not just doing one book. He's, he's a monster. 
Darren Doan is the guy that, that directed Punk Rock Show, he directed the Chick Magnet video. He's, he's done a lot of work, and he did Ready to Rage off the new album. So he's done a lot of stuff for us lately as well. Um, so I was too precious with some of these songs, and that's why ultimately they got set aside. And when they get set aside, it's no longer fresh. Even if it's a great song, it has to be a B-side because that's just what it is. So nowadays we have a different world. We have songs that can be just singles and they're not on an album, but they're really good. And it's like, wow, that should be on an album because it's so good. But also if it's so good, it doesn't need to be on an album because it stands alone by itself as a single. So yeah, Ryan, thanks for the call. Um, let's rock was a, a fun little project for us to put together. Ultimately, we just wanted to get some of those songs out there in a way that we knew we couldn't really put some of those songs out on a real record. So even though now that it's now that it's 2024, when you just go to your streaming service, all those are just records. Even, even live records are just records. So somebody that wasn't familiar with all the records in the canon of the catalog, they might just think Let's Rock is just our, well, it's another album. All right, cool. It's the one right after Secret Weapon. Very cool. Or the one right before Secret Weapon. There, I got that right. All right, uh, let's get to your next part. Hey, Mike, it's Ryan again, your buddy in Quebec. Uh, I've heard other people call twice in a row, so I hadn't called you in a long time, so I'm going to make up for lost time here. I have a real-life situation I need your assistance with. So I'm a working 9-to-5 guy, married guy, so I don't have time to pursue my rock star dreams of yesterday, but... I, I record music on the side, and I recorded a local band that we did four songs, and it turned out awesome, and we all love it, and it got me really reminiscent, you know, like, hey, I want to join something creative again, so my wife was down, I had some extra time one night a week, I, uh, I joined them as their second guitar player, they needed one, and we've practiced like five, six times, uh, they practice every week, and sometimes I just leave practice thinking it's like, a complete waste of time. It's not sounding better. It might kind of be a skill issue on some of their parts. And I've just always had a real, real high standard my whole life. And I, I joined them because, you know, I didn't think I'd get a chance to do anything else before it's too late and I should just do it for fun. But I'm quickly realizing like, hey, if I got the will and I got the time, I could just do my own thing and I could get any A plus musician that I know locally to play with me. And why should I settle for something? So we have a show in a couple weeks. They're advertising. Their new member is going to be announced that night. And I just feel so guilty every time I see these posts because they don't know that I'm thinking about bailing last minute. I have the letter drafted to tell them, uh, just what would you do? Um, you know, I want to be a man of my word and just honor the show. But I feel like maybe it's easy to get out before we actually play live and people find out I joined. So, what would you do? I know you've been in the same band since you were like 15 or 16, but hmm. if this was happening to you now and you were 40 like me, <laughs> yeah. all right, Mike, appreciate it. Take care. Ryan, that's not an easy question, but or an easy answer for that matter, but my gut tells me that it would be better to tell them ahead of time um, I don't know how far ahead this probably looks like you probably already did the show or didn't do the show. <laughs> so I wonder maybe you could call back in and, and let us know what happened. But um, let's, let's assume you haven't done the show yet. I would do the show, but what I would do is because you don't want people, you don't want people to think, okay, this is your new band. That's the problem. I think you really just need to have a, a, a talk with those guys and be like, guys, you know, I thought this is what I wanted um, but it turns out I, I don't, I want to do my own thing, da, 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 da. whatever it is you want to communicate. I think it's important to communicate that to them and they might still get mad and hate you. That's not important. What's important is you communicating to them the right thing. But what I would say is, Hey, I've been thinking about this. My heart's not in it. Um, my time's valuable. I have a family. We all, you know, have families. Time is valuable. So I want to do the show with you. But after that, I'm going to go my separate ways. And so 
don't be, you know, let's change the communication online to come, come to the show, but don't make it about me. Don't make it about me being the new guy. I'm just going to be here filling in uh, with you guys. Let's have fun. Let's do it. But ultimately, I don't, I don't see myself spending more time with you. That, that's what I would say. Something like that. Think about it. Um, now, there's option A. Option B, if you're like, I don't even want to do the show, tell them ASAP. Tell them as soon as possible because you don't want to leave them right before the show is happening. It's just a really icky situation. There's, there's not enough time to find a good player to replace you. Um, that's going to leave some bad blood. So I would say if you're not going to do the show, just tell them right away. Let them know. And as far as you doing your own thing, absolutely. You should do your own thing. You have your own standards. Uh, when we have people that play, we play with, we absolutely, they got to come prepared. You got to come to practice knowing the song. Now, if I spring something on them and they don't know it, I'm not going to hold it against them. But if if we're like, okay, we need to know this song and we all talk about it, everybody needs to know the song. We come prepared. We show up. I mean, with Goldfinger, we don't practice all, all, almost ever. And we show up and just play the show. And we'll go over a few things backstage and, and, and it, when it works out. Now, if we practiced, it would be so much tighter. But we're professionals. We do pretty well. Um, but we come prepared. We come knowing the song. We know our parts. Still screw up sometimes, but that's just a human thing, not a I'm not prepared thing. And I think that's what the difference is. Is it a human thing or is it consistently not prepared? It sounds like you guys are consistently not prepared. They consistently maybe don't have the talent to be prepared. They don't have the, the, the knowledge of, oh, I need to practice before practice. I thought that's what practice was before. No, 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 no. When you're practicing with other people, you need to know your part already. So you're just practicing being with people and doing the show. You're not practicing the parts. You got to know the parts, and then you practice doing the parts together. It's like doing a play. You don't show up and learn your, your, your speaking lines the, the night of the play, or maybe not the night of the play, but the night of dress rehearsal. You have to know your parts, and then you do the play with everybody else. Boom. All right. Great call. Let's do one more quick one, and we're out of here. Smacktober. Hey, Mike. It's Gabe from uh, Tannewick, Washington. I was listening to your podcast, and you said that you met DMX. And then I started thinking about, like, who famous have I met? And there's one time this guy named um, Ricky Schroeder. He was on a show called Silver Spoons back in the day. I yep. met that guy. Yep. I worked at a bagel shop when I was a teenager, and he was in there. He came in there. Nice. Like, a few times, actually. I don't know if he lived in Arizona, but that's where he was at. But I, I had a question, like, who other than DMX famous people have you met besides yourself? <laughs> I've uh. met you guys a bunch of times. That's awesome every time. But, uh, yeah, let us know. All right, later. Hey, what's up? Thanks for the call, Gabe. You know, this is going to be a short answer. I, don't, I haven't really met that many famous people. I've met tons of musicians, artists, um, Joan Jett type, you know. I've met a lot of musicians. But, but famous celebrities, I've never met people like The Rock or like you know, not, nothing like that. I've met Elvis Costello, um, you know, Obviously, uh, a I've, I haven't really met too many actors. I'm trying to think of any actors I've met. Catherine Heigl, of course. Um, <laughs> a few, a few other smaller actors I've met. A ton of, I mean, actually, a ton. Um, but really, I mean, like it's mostly like I've seen a bunch of people, right? Like I've seen Matt Damon walking around New York, but like I don't go talk to him because it's Matt Damon walking around New York. And everybody's leaving him alone. I'm not going to talk to him. So that's usually what it is, is I'll see people and I won't talk to them because uh, what am I going to do? Like, hey, I love your movies. All right, see you later. Uh, but although they would probably be stoked if I said I love your movies, 
Matt Damon would be like, that guy was awesome. I love that guy, that tattoo guy over there, whoever he is. He, he looks like he's in a band. Um, so, yeah, if I really could think about all the stories, I could probably list you a ton of people that I've seen uh, and, and even talked to uh, briefly. Um, Alice Cooper, you know, <laughs> David Cassidy. Uh, you know, now that I'm thinking about, like, there's, like, little, you know, you know, being at MTV, meeting Sting's son. I didn't, I didn't meet Sting. I met Sting's son. Um, he was really nice. So, I mean, think about it. It's like, yeah, I've met a ton of sort of famous people, but nobody absolutely ginormous, nobody like Michael Jackson or um, LeBron James, nobody like that. Nobody like that, but um, I'm sure it'll happen. I'm sure it'll happen. You know, I've met actors. I can't even remember their names, you know, like friends of friends that come to shows. Um, there's been a lot of different, very famous actors. Like Carmen Electra has come to an MXPX show. Um, and there's been other celebrities that have come to MXPX shows. Um, but I can't remember their names. All right. That's fun. As you can tell, I really care, but <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I live a fairly, fairly normal life, I think. And then all of a sudden I get reminded now and again that it's like, no, dude, you don't live a normal life. Bob, producer Bob, not plant Bob, producer Bob often reminds me that I am not normal. I'm starting to get a little bit of a complex about it, but uh, we're going to end it here. Thank you so much for uh, calling in. Thanks for your calls. If you want to do so yourself. The number is eight three. Uh, sorry, three six zero eight three zero six 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 zero. Leave me a voicemail. Music Monday. You can submit to the Mike Herrera podcast Facebook group page. Submit a YouTube link and a blurb about your band. Make sure you put the band and the song in there, or group, or artist, or whatever it is. I'll do another one of those. Um, all right. Besides that, mxpeaks.com. Get your tickets. Come see us in Chicago, back-to-back, -back, December 13th and 14th at Metro. And then Happy New Year, January 3rd in Houston at the House of Blues, and then January 4th at Dallas House of Blues. MXPeaks.com for those tickets. All right. Shout out to Bob McKnight. Thanks for doing it. Thanks for uh, producing the podcast and being you. I appreciate you. I hope everybody is safe by now from the hurricane down in Helene in Florida. Uh, North Carolina got hit so hard. So my heart goes out to you. Uh, anybody that's affected by those storms, we're not seeing a lot about it um, on social media unless you really look for it. Um, so I just wanted to mention that, that um, I'm really thinking about you guys out there. And if there's anything I could do or spread the word, get a hold of me. All right. Peace. Peace.